Well, I haven't done an action cam review in some time now. So we're doing an action cam review. Yeah. So we're going to unbox this. This is one from Cam Park. Now, I've done some of their dash cams before, and I've been very happy with their dash cams. This is their action cam. It's the X25. So we're going to unbox it, and then I'm going to hook it up, power it up, take it outside. We're going to do just some quick video tests to see what we think of the quality, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, let's do that. All right, guys, so here it is, the Cam Park Ultra HD 4K. Let's actually look here on the computer. And you and I can see here, look at this, not bad at all, right? Look at that, Cam Park 4K 16 megapixel action camera, 170 degree wide angle sports camcorder with two rechargeable batteries and accessory kit. Nice. Right now, look at that, five stars from nine reviews. So let's take a look. Far from perfect, but decent from the price. All right, not sure what this is. Well, I get it. You know what? You, you got to realize that this is the camera that costs, what does it cost here? I don't even remember what this costs. $129. Now, if you're going to put this up against a five, $600 GoPro, of course, it's not going to be quite as good. Anyway, here we go. Number one, great camcorder with awesome features, better than expected, decent camera for the price, great videos. Uh, very happy with Amazon and the products. Great camera for a great price, clear instructions, great picture quality. Everything here was five except for the first one, which is a four. Is this a GoPro? No. Okay, no, I, it, and you're right, it's not. So it's it's Cam Park. It's an X25. So let's crack this open, actually, Wi-Fi connection. I'm not gonna do the Wi-Fi stuff, nothing on the back, because you know what, you guys, depending on the phone you're with, or depending on if you're on iOS, or if you're on Android, all that stuff could be a bit different. So we're gonna show this, show you quality. Yes, good, let's do that. All right, so nice little simple open. I haven't opened this, so I have no idea what's in it. Okay, so number one, we get surprise by sharing your experience, your experience matters. Oh, okay, you get, it. a lot of them do that nowadays. You can get a free accessory if you share your thoughts, which is cool. X25, true 4K action camera. This is the manual, and what's nice about it, this is what I'm gonna tell you. Look at that, big manual, good size fonts, good text, very legible, easy to read. Nothing wrong with that. Even some color, look at you guys going. Nicely done. Again, you guys can look at the manual when it's there, but this whole manual, from start to finish, all in English. So if you're buying this and you need a different language, just be aware, you might be a little out of luck, out of luck, so be it. We have the camera, yes, so we got the camera, and the camera does come, I like that, that's a good size looking lens there. It does come with two batteries, so very cool. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna put those over here. Two batteries, which is excellent, and we get this, I'm just gonna slide this down. You don't need to see this box anymore. So in here, this is our accessory kit, would be my guess. And we are going to figure out how the heck this thing opens. There we go. Okay, accessory kit. Here we go. Ready? I'm just going to dump this out. Okay, so this is everything. So we get a naked case adapter, which is cool. We get the, I want to say, not quite waterproof casing. It could do a little bit of like rain. But the nice thing is it has the empty backs or the open backs so that you and I can get a little bit of sound that comes through if you so need to have some extra, especially dust protection. Let's say you're mountain biking or whatever. You may want to put this case on so the dust doesn't get on the camera or like rock chips and stuff like that so the camera's protected. But this will help get better audio through it. Not great audio, I'm guessing, but it helps, right? You get uh, some Velcro straps. You get the standard little GoPro mount. So these are the quarter inch to GoPro, which is cool. You get another mount set there. Uh, you get a right angle adapter, which is awesome. You get a standard adapter. You get your USB cable, which is a micro cleaning cloth and zip ties. If you're zip tying this, you also get a bike mount, cool. And a couple more mounts. So that's a lot of accessories, right? And we're seeing this a lot with a lot of non-GoPro, because if you buy a GoPro, guess what you get? The camera. That's kind of it. 
But if you buy one of these, you get all this stuff. So that's that's kind of awesome. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually take this camera, take all these little sticker dues off. Yeah, that's right. That's what I call it, sticker dues. Take all this stuff off. And we're going to take this camera out of the case because I think testing it in the case is silly. We're going to test it out of the case to see what kind of quality this little camera can produce. Get this little one off the lens as well. There it is so you guys can see it. Yes, another little one there. And we'll put the battery in. Hopefully this battery has a little bit of a charge. We will find out, I guess. Does this open good? Let's see, me and my no nails. All right, it opens all right, nothing. Nothing fantastic, but it, well, make sure you got a little bit of nails, a little bit of nails. That's going to go in there. All right, simple question is, do I have power? Ready? Power. Do I have power? Hold. Okay, I park. There it is. Bingo. Let's just do it real fast. This is set to 2.7K 30 frames. I am going to, let's see if we can change that, shall we? Let's hit the power button. Just tap it. Photo. Video, photo, video. Is it touchscreen? No. Is it have another button somewhere to be able to? Because I'm pretty sure OK is going to just start the video, right? Card not detected. No, you're right. And if I hold it, it's going to shut down. All right, I'm going to figure this out. And uh, you and I will be right back. I'll actually probably see you guys outside. So I'll set this up. We'll go outside and we'll talk about it. All right, sounds good. All right, so I'm back just really fast before we go outside. This button at the top, if you tap on it, should start recording. If you long hold on it, should take you into the settings just so you guys can see this. So now you can go to, I guess we, there's up and down arrows on the side, so we just kind of go through them. And then we tap, right, resolution. I can be like, what do we got here? So let's go up to 1080, 120 FPS, 120 in 1080. That's fantastic. We, we may just try that one out after, right? So let's go up here. We'll set that 4K. Excellent. You will notice that when you go to 4K, certain things turn off like distortion correction. So you can't actually do that. So be it. White balance is there. Exposure settings. So if you want to do any kind of compensation is kind of cool. Uh, sharpness. We have it set to middle. Video quality. Let's take that. Let's take that up a notch, shall we? Video, we're going up to high. Yeah, no, nope. we're going up to high. Yeah, we are. We're going to ISO, auto, main recording. What do you have for options? 264 or 265? Hmm, let's go to 265, shall we? We'll try that. Let's go time watermark, sure. Record audio, yes, please. And that's that's it. Wi-Fi, you can turn, and again, you use the front button, the power button, to go through these ones, right? So you have the ability to do image rotation, which is kind of cool if you want, so if you want to mount this upside down. Wi-Fi on and off, nope, turn that off. Wi-Fi information, reset Wi-Fi. Light frequency source, that's kind of cool, so if you actually want to come in and set your light source, if you know, so for flickers, right, if it's flickering or not. That's that's actually really cool. LED indicator, so you could say turn that on or off if you don't want people knowing you're actually recording. <laughs> Again, kind of cool. All right, and last but not least, we're back out. So that's kind of cool. Not a lot of settings in there, but enough. Enough to do everything you and I needed to do, which is excellent. All right, so let's go set this up. I got it set to 4K. I may shoot some stuff in 1080, 120 just to see how well that slow is and to make sure it is actually shooting in 120 frames, not doing like frame doubling, you know, because that's important. All right, I'm going to turn this off right now and I'm going to go outside. We'll see you right there. All right, guys, so we're outside and you're hearing this camera. This is the audio. It's about arm's length away and uh, it's a little bit of a rainy day outside but you can see how wide this is supposedly 170 degrees a few things to be aware of so there's no way that I can see that you can change that so there's no like narrow field of view or anything like that it just kind of is what it is and that's okay it's all right 4k wide that's if that's what you want that's what you're getting so the other thing too is that there is no again as far as I can see especially if you're shooting 4k uh, any kind of image stabilizer so there's no optical there's no electronic 
nothing like that so just kind of be aware of it but again you are only paying slightly over a hundred dollars Canadian for a 4k 30 frames per second action camera so that's not horrible right not horrible at all so what does it look like well here you go you can see it I'm gonna turn the camera around so we can see what's in front of me hold on So we're just going to walk up to my house and we're simply going to switch it. We'll keep it in the 4K, but we'll do some close-ups of something that has some detail or definition. And then we'll switch it to the 1080, 120 frames. All right, hold on. Jeez, a leaf right there. All right, so we're going to switch it to 1080p 120, and we're going to to see how well that helps with slowing things down. So we're doing this in a 24 frame timeline. So we're going to do some just a couple quick little movements just to see if it actually is 120 frames. Okay, let's do that right now. Alright guys, so that's done, so we're going to go inside now, take a look at the footage, and uh, see what we think. Alright, in we go. Alright my friends, well, we're back inside, and we've had a chance to play with this and look at the footage. So, what did we think? First off, I think the actual colors that come out of this thing and the actual resolution and sharpness are actually really nice. That sensor that they have in there, which I'm not even sure what it is. Uh, I don't know if it says anything. Does it say anything about what sensor that is? Does it say true 4K, waterproof, built-in Wi-Fi, various modes, value accessories? So not a lot in there for what sensor it's using, but that's okay. That's all right. You know, we got a couple little things here if you guys want to take a look. Instant share through built-in Wi-Fi, professional action cam, waterproof, time lapse, 170 degree, multifunction and some comparison with some of their other models. But we don't know what sensor it is. But I really don't care. The, the sensor is doing a great job. Uh, the 4K looks good. I did shoot just a tiny little piece there. I hope you saw that in the 2.7K, so that looked great. And the 1080p 120. So the real question, I just leave this up to you, is what did you think of the footage? Because really, who cares what the brand is? What we care about is does the footage look good enough for the money that we're spending? right and in this case i think it does look really great and because it doesn't have any kind of image stabilization i think getting something like a uh, action cam style gimbal can be really useful so for instance i i actually have one that i use on some of my action cams that don't have stabilizers because i like the image quality that comes from them and that definitely helps smooth out any of the shots uh, and i right now i'm using the iSteady pro i think it's pro 2 i'll put a link up here if you guys are interested and that one's been super good for for using this kind of stuff some really cool features inside it which i like few things just just to be aware of that i did notice uh number one is that 
the memory card slot is really deep before the actual memory card clicks in. So if you have no fingernails when you're trying to put a card in or take it out, you're like, it's never gonna grab, it never clicks. I can barely get it in or out. If my nails were any shorter, it wouldn't happen. So I don't know if it's just on this one that I got, but you really got to push it. I don't know if you guys, you won't be able to see that, but it's it's like it's in there. You know, you, you have to either carry something to be able to push in there to get it out or make sure you have a little bit of fingernails. And again, I don't know if it's just mine that I got, but this is the only one I have, so it's what I'm telling you. The other thing to be aware of is on all the videos that were in 4K or 2.7K, I did shoot in the uh, H.265 codec, but when I shot in 1080p at 120 with that codec, for some reason I ended up getting footage that looked like this. You can see it right here and that's not overly useful. Now when I switched the primary back to H.264, it was the only change I did, the slow motion came out fine. So be aware, I probably, you know, there's a little bit of space saving when you go to H.265 versus H.264. Quality wise, I don't think you're gonna really notice any difference. So if you're a person that's gonna be switching back and forth from 4K or 2.7K to that 1080p 120, I would keep it in that H.264. Uh, it definitely was something that was messing up on my camera. And uh, I tried two different cards and it happened on both because I thought maybe speed was an issue, which doesn't make sense because H.265 should be smaller files, which means that it should need less speed to write. Uh, is it worth the money? Again, I, th I think so. Anything, you know, anything that puts out this kind of quality in that $100 range, I think is great. You know, I don't think you can go wrong. I think you get a ton of accessories and which is also good. So if you want this as a secondary camera or this is your very first camera, action camera, I think it's fantastic. The audio was okay. It's, I can't expect anything more from an action cam. So I think it was, it does its job, which is good. Is it GoPro quality? Well, no, I've seen one of the reviews saying, oh, it doesn't match up to a GoPro. And I'm like, you're right, because GoPro is like $600. And this is like just over a hundred. Um, you could you could literally buy like five of these. So, mm. anyways, I'm gonna leave a link down below if you guys are interested in this. It's the Cam Park X25 4K 30 1080p 120, which is kind of cool. Link down below if you guys are interested at all in picking one of these up. And uh, I'm gonna leave you guys there. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as per the usual, we will see you guys in the next video. Later, my friends.